everyone! Today we're going to discuss the secrets, easter eggs, and some other references you might have missed while watching the newly released Thor Love and Thunder. If you haven't watched the movie yet, press pause, watch it, and then come back because we're going to discuss some heavy spoilers. If you liked the video, be sure to leave us a like and subscribe to the channel to not miss out on any future content regarding your favorite superhero movies. Without further ado, let's get started! Thor Ragnarok primarily dropped the entire cast from the first two Thor films. Love and Thunder not only revives Natalie Portman's Jane Foster, but it provides cameo roles to both of her old supporting characters. Trainee Darcy Lewis is played by Kat Dennings, who attends to her during one of her chemotherapies. She was last spotted in WandaVision, where she annihilated the fraudulent sword chairperson Tyler Hayward and escaped even before the FBI could doubt her. Although there is no reference to her time in Westview or any identification of what she's up to until now, we might well not be amazed if she persists to show up as MCU scientist. Professor Eric Selvig also makes an appearance, played by Stellan Skarsgård, who works out a posh edition of a FaceTime chat to discuss Jane's state. Last but not least, Idris Elba's Heimdall shows up in every Thor film by making an appearance in Valhalla, the Asgardian variant of the afterworld, in the movie's second end credit scene. In the comics, Gore's Necrosword, the all-corrupting blade, which was used to slaughter gods, was also the supervillain's weapon of choice. The Necrosword has subtly different beginnings there. It was generated by the villainous symbiote God Null to assist in his god-killing campaign. Instead of just being handed down through generations at the dawn of humanity, Gore ultimately sets his sights on it. Thor Love and Thunder most likely will not use this variant of the Necrosword due to film rights concerns. If it is a symbiote weapon, it can only be used with Sony's authorization or in a Sony Marvel movie. In the movie, Dionysus slays the former holder of the Necrosword, but he is not labeled. Thor spotted donning a T with Yggdrasil on it throughout his first scene with the Guardians of the Galaxy. In Greek legend, this is the World Tree, which claims to support the nine worlds, such as Asgard, Jotunheim, and Niflheim. This has nothing to do with the content of the movie, but it is a great tribute to Thor's comic series as well as the famous Old Norse heritage. The musical score to Thor Love and Thunder is packed with Guns N' Roses music, four of which are portrayed in the movie. If you look really closely, you will recognize a t-shirt and signage trying to promote the pop group, as well as the reality that Heimdall's son has adopted the name Axel after Guns N' Roses singer Axel Rose. We presume it is correct to conclude that director Taika Waititi is a big fan. Thor, along with the Guardians of the Galaxy, assists in rescuing a planet at the beginning of Thor Love and Thunder, and the God of Thunder is compensated for his endeavors. Enthusiasts of the comic strip will acknowledge the Shrieking Goats as Tangrasnir, Toothnasher, and Tangjoster, Toothgrinder, from Greek mythology, even though they are not named in the movie. Thor's sledge is yanked by these mysterious goats. They have the mildly glitzy task of moving a visitor sailing ship in Thor Love and Thunder. The goats have now found their way further into MCU, and they have a new routine of shrieking. For Avengers enthusiasts, New Asgard has been converted into a tourist attraction. The area is packed with Marvel citations, along with an ice cream shop named Infinity Cones. The symbol for the shop represents an Infinity Gauntlet carrying an ice cream cone, with six lit candles chosen to represent the six Infinity Stones. Zeus and the Olympians have occurred in Marvel Comics for years, populating a pocket depth known as Olympus. In the Omnipotent City series, there is plenty of gods to pinpoint among the audience, although Moon Knight's Khonshu here seems to be clearly missing. A sharp eye, however, can locate Bast, the goddess of the panther tribe in Wakanda. A blue god with some nifty helmet that seems to be Aztec in styling sits beside her, which might also make reference to the forthcoming Black Panther Wakanda Forever, which will incorporate a clan of submerged Aztecs headed by Namor. Thor, Jane, Valkyrie, and Korg commute to Omnipotent City to ask Zeus for a military to halt the God Butcher. The lofty celestial creatures have made appearances in Guardians of the Galaxy and Eternals, so it is not the first time we have seen them do it live action. Sif, played by Jamie Alexander, makes a quick appearance in the MCU. Thor manages to find Lady Sif beside Falagar the Behemoth when she calls upon Thor for extra help in Gore the God Butcher's strikes. The image is taken straightforwardly from the comic strip. Gore, who is on a plan to destroy all gods with his Necrosword, has brutally murdered the humongous hyena-like monster. Falagar is the patron god of the Galactic Frontier and the Tournament of Immortals champion who supposedly fought black holes for pleasure. He was also friends with Thor. We discover in the narrative about Thor and Jane's romantic life that they ended things because they were both so focused on work. All through the medley, Jane is repeatedly called aside, while Thor must suddenly disappear and save the globe. 
it is hard to place this in the MCU time frame, given that Jane and Thor's romantic life emerged to be tense at the period. And yet Fury went away prior to Thor and Jane's breakup in 2014's Captain America The Winter Soldier. At one moment, he gets a call from Nick Fury, but intelligent audiences will recognize he has mischievously saved his contact as Nick Fury with two R's. Thor's roommate briefly seems to appear in New Asgard as an associate to King Valkyrie when she is working to keep the Asgardians relaxed after Gore kidnaps all the youngsters. Daryl Jacobson has decided to return. He first popped up in the Captain America Civil War home release, One Shot Team Thor in which the God of Fury moves to Australia to reside with Daryl in the occurrences of Civil War. Daryl later appears in various one-shots, Team Thor Part 2 and Team Daryl, wherein he shifts in with the Grandmaster. Taika Waititi primarily directed them all, so it is wonderful to see him deliver Pearson back in time and make him authoritatively a part of the MCU storyline. Loki does not show up in Thor Love and Thunder, as we already know. However, there is a significant allusion to Thor's brother in the film's Omnipotent City episode. When Thor agrees to visit Zeus, he is wearing a costume, which God's commander flicks off, disclosing that he is not wearing anything underneath it. There seems to be a concise homage to Loki on his bottom, who died at the start of Avengers Infinity War. This portrays Loki's headgear and a shattered heart, as well as the sayings, R.I.P. Loki. Of course, there is a substitute Loki in the MCU, this is the Loki who has used the Tesseract to disintegrate after the protagonist journeyed back through time in Avengers Endgame. Thor Love and Thunder have a considerable storyline encompassing Asgardian Kid. Taika Waititi utilized the real-life children of some of his members of the cast. Tristan Hemsworth, Chris Hemsworth's son, appears to be playing youthful Thor, and his twin Sasha performs one of the Asgardians abducted by Gore. Aleph and Amala Millipede, the kids of Natalie Portman, are amongst the kidnapped as guardians as well. Takenga Ote Hinakau and Matewa Kiratapu, Taika Watiti's children, also show up in those sequences. Christian Bale's children, Emmeline and Joseph, also star in the movie. India Rose Hemsworth performs Love, Gore's daughter, who is brought back to life at the end of Thor Love and Thunder and is eventually adopted by Thor. Thor and Gore the God Butcher fight to the end at the Gate to Eternity. However, if you look really closely at the surroundings of this incident, you will realize numerous monuments covering the walls. Uatu the Watcher, who popped up in the Disney Plus What If sequence, seems to be one of them. Jeffrey Wright plays him as a spectator of the Infinite Universe. This seems to have been his first live-action presence in the MCU. The other figurines in the spot are unidentified, but they appear to be the Living Tribunal, the living embodiment of multiversal law, as well as Infinity and Death, two of the four celestial units that solidified the Infinity Stones. Werewolves are pushing their way into the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and Thor Love and Thunder prominently featured the first of them, a kid who demonstrates he is a lycan. Werewolves are popularly referred to as lycanthropes. There is also a mid-Asian, which is supposedly an allusion to a racial group with the ability to transform objects into gold. Remarkably, there has not been a racial group known as mid-Asians in Marvel Comics, but they really do appear in Doctor Who. Thor and Gore's final showdown actually took place at the very center of the galaxy, in a small shrine dedicated to eternity. The sanctuary is home to monuments, trying to honor some of Marvel's most potent celestial creatures, such as the Watcher and the Living Tribunal. The Living Tribunal, a nearly omnipotent object, was pranked in the first Doctor Strange movie, and then another statue in this homage has been seen in Loki. Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness showcased the Living Tribunal in a short scene wherein Stephen Strange and America Chavez whacked well beyond him as they bounced away all around the Infinite Universe. That's it for today. Have you noticed some of these secrets already? Did we leave out another secret or Easter egg? Let us know in the comments down below. Be sure to leave us a like if you enjoyed the video and subscribe for more content on the biggest upcoming blockbusters. Until next time.